everyone and welcome to another Rogers Historical Museum's Kids Craft Corner. Today you might notice a little bit different in background as we are here at the Museum of Native American History as well as being joined by museum manager Nicole Benedict. Today we are celebrating Native American Heritage Month by exploring the history of the Dreamcatchers, the Ojibwe tribe, the Pan-Indian movement, and at the very end, we will show you how to craft your very own dream catcher. But before we get started, Nicole, could you tell us a little bit about the Museum of Native American History? Of course. Uh, here at the Museum of Native American History, we uh, have a collection that spans 14,000 years, from the Paleo period of the Mammoths and the Ice Age all the way to the 1940s. Uh, we also are... Um, mission here is to educate everyone on the diversity of cultures of the first people of North America, South America, and Central America. So our collection spans all the way from Alaska down to the Antilles. We're so excited that you guys are here today and ready to get started. Awesome, and with that, let's get started. Early origins of the Dreamcatcher come from the Ojibwe Native American tribe. The Ojibwe, also known as the Chippewa, lived in the northern Great Lakes area, including Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, North Dakota, and Ontario, Canada. They were hunters and fishers, as well as farmers growing crops such as corn, squash, and wild rice. The Ojibwe also lived a sedentary life, meaning they did not move around. Instead, they built homes called wigwams. Here at the Museum of Native American History, there are a few artifacts from the Ojibwe tribe a wooden cradle board, a pair of moccasins, and a war club. Let's take a closer look at them. The first object is a Chippewa wooden cradle board. Native American mothers use cradle boards like these to keep their children safe and secure while allowing the mothers to move. Often these cradle boards were beaded and carved in a very ornate fashion and then passed down through generations. They were typically made in the same fashion, with a flat, hard back made out of wood for support with some method of securing the child to the backrest. The backs were often covered with leather or cloth with a lacing on the front to strap the infant in. Sometimes they would even create a visor at the top to protect the child's head. The next object we have are the Chippewa moccasins. While traditional Native American clothing has varied widely from tribe to tribe, one constant item is the moccasin. The word moccasin comes from the Algonquian word for footwear, but only because the Algonquins were the first Native Americans encountered by the Europeans. The moccasins were often decorated with an elaborate bead or quillwork designs and were used by most Native Americans from coast to coast. One pair of Chippewa moccasins is made from smoked deer skin and is decorated with Mide Man figures, which was thought to bring healing. The other pair showcases intricate floral beadwork designs. The final object is the Wolf War Club. Some clubs were more than just an instrument used in battle. Others served a ritualistic role in dances or ceremonies, and that's what this one was used for. With intricately carved features, it's too fragile to have endured the abuse of hand-to-hand -hand combat. The figure represents a wolf with an open mouth, sharp teeth, and the protruding blade is thought to represent a tongue. This club may relate to the existence of wolf clans in all of the tribes of the Great Lakes region, or to the frequent devotion to wolf spirits by the warriors who used to sing wolf songs while on the warpath. Stories from the Ojibwe tell the origins of the Dreamcatcher as a representation of a web created by the spider woman Asabakashi that catches bad dreams and holds them until the sun comes up. The bad dreams are then destroyed by the sun's light. The feathers hanging down from the dream catcher let the good dreams descend as if they were climbing down a ladder to the person sleeping below, allowing them to have good dreams. Women of the Ojibwe make dream catchers to help aid Asabukashi since the people are so spread out throughout the continent now and Asabukashi was not able to tend to all of them. The wooden round shape of the dream catcher can represent the shape of the earth or circular path which the sun travels every day. The webbing of the dream catcher represents the spider's web and was often made of string or sinew, which are connecting fibers that connect muscles and bones together. 
Finally, the feathers can represent different things, such as an owl's feather being symbolic of wisdom or an eagle's feather representing courage. The Pan-Indian movement during the 1960s and 1970s saw Native Americans from around the country organize themselves into political and social groups that crossed tribal lines. With this cross-tribal connection, other tribes created their own style of dream catchers along with its own lore. For example, the Lakota also had it originate with a spider. However, their spider was a trickster instead of a protector like the spider woman was for the Ojibwe. The Lakota Dreamcatchers, in addition, represents more of the good and bad choices people make in life, instead of just their dreams. The Lakota were not the only tribe, though. The Cherokee, like the ones that lived here in northwest Arkansas, had their own version of the Dreamcatcher. The Cherokee's version was more elaborate of a design with many beads and feathers on them. With their belief in the connection between numbers and events, the Cherokee Dreamcatcher could also have several interlocking circles as well. With the Ojibwe Dreamcatchers were relatively small, about four to five inches across, the Cherokee's Dreamcatchers were much larger, roughly six to 12 inches across. Now that we've learned a little bit about the Dreamcatcher, let's go craft our own. For this activity, you will need some sort of ring, either made out of cardboard like the one I have here, or an embroidery hoop, string, a hole punch, if you're using the cardboard, the instructional diagram, beads, feathers, and markers or colored pencils if you want to decorate your ring. Now that I have my supplies, let's get ready to make our own dream catchers. So I already have my ring cut out out of cardboard and I have all the numbers written around the ring and the hole punches already punched out. I also have my string here and I went and taped the end of the string with just a little bit of masking tape. That way it keeps it from fraying so much when I go through all of the holes. I also have my scissors so I can cut any of the extra string off, as well as markers to decorate my ring after I'm done. And then I have some beads and feathers to further decorate it once I'm done. So let's get started. So you're going to go and take your string and go and find the hole that you labeled as number one. And you're going to turn your ring over and slide the string through. And you're gonna get just enough so that you can make it through all the holes. So we're gonna go and just go through number order. So we went through one. Now we're gonna go through two, pull it around. Next is three, make sure you pull the punch through there, you have to pull quite a bit of string through just so that it's really kind of tight as you're going along, I gotta find my end again, so then we'll go up through four, And then through the back, up through five. So a lot of this is a lot like sewing. We're just gonna go in and out through six. We're gonna pull it through again. I'm just gonna go back and pull a little bit extra material through here. I go through all of the holes. And again, you can use any kind of string that you want, any kind of color. There we go. Through five. Make it a little tighter there. There we go. Oh, just pull a little bit more through here. Okay. You're gonna keep going through the back of seven, pull it through. And 
And then you're gonna go through eight. I went the wrong way. Sometimes you just have to make sure you're going through the right way there. There we go. All right, only a few more holes to go. So we'll go through the back of hole number nine. And just the same thing we've been doing. Just Pull all of the excess through. Gonna tighten it up some here. Want to make sure it's nice and tight so that we our dream catcher goes and catches all of those bad dreams. So we're going to go next through the back up through hole number 10. Going to pull it all the way through. Uh-oh. And I did it backwards again. But that's okay. So you will go through the front of 10. Sometimes it can be kind of tricky to remember which way which of the string goes. And then now we will go through the back of 11. All right. And then we're gonna go hold the string up towards the top where one, where we started it all. And before we finish tying it off, I'm just going to give just a little bit of a pull on my extra string here. So there's where we started. There's the extra at the end. So I'm just gonna pull it through just a little bit to make it nice and snug. Tighten it through three. Tighten it up through four. Sometimes it can kind of help of just kind of pulling it tighter as you're going through each hole. My feather's trying to get in the way there. So we'll pull it through five, tighten it through six, tighten it up through seven, and tighten it up through Eight through nine, through ten, eleven, and we'll pull it tight through the top there. All right, so now that we have it through all of the holes. We're gonna flip it over here and we're gonna go and tie it off. So I'm gonna go and tie it. So there's a little knot here. There we go, it's nice and snug. So you can see there. And now with the extra string here, I'm just gonna make a little bit of a tie at the top. So that way I have a little bit of a loop that I can go and hang it with. So we've got it, our dream catcher made. Now it's time to kind of decorate it. I'm gonna cut this little bit of extra string off here. All right, so again, now it's time to decorate it up. So 
I've got some beads I'm gonna go and hang down from our little parts here for the dreams, to the good dreams, to kind of run down so that they can get to you. And I have just a little bit of extra yarn here, or string, and I'm gonna punch holes in the bottom of right below about hole number 11, eight, and five. So we're gonna do those. Ooh, that was kind of loud. All right, and the next one's gonna be over here. Now, hole punching in cardboard can be a little hard. So we'll have to, you might have to have an adult help you. There we go. And again, just like when you hole punch all of these holes, you need to make sure that it's not too close to the edge. So we're gonna take it. I'm not, not gonna make them too long, just long enough so that I can kind of hang down some. I might just use just a little bit of this last extra thread that I have. So we're gonna send it on through. And then we're just gonna flip it over and we're gonna just tie it off here. Just like what we did at the very top. And we'll go up there, we're gonna tie it. And then I don't want it, this is a little long, so I'm gonna cut this off some. But it's much easier to make them longer and then cut extra off later than it is to have to go and try to add on to your string. So I'm gonna cut them, um, probably about here looks good. Put that over there. All right, so now I'm gonna go and put some of the beads on. Now to put the beads on, what you'll want to do is make a knot somewhere at the top first of how high you want to go. So to just kind of figure it out, I'm going to get there and I'm just going to use my tape again to go and make just a little bit tighter so that way it doesn't go and make it easier to kind of thread through these beads here. Just gonna put it on the end there. Just go around. Now these beads are kind of tiny, so you need to make sure that your, the tip now is good enough to fit through. Need to make it just a bit tighter. So just kind of squeeze it in there. All right, let's see if that will work. There we go. So I want my bead to be probably, I want it to be just about there. So I'm gonna go and kind of just remember where I have it. And I'm gonna go and tie. Make like a little loop here. And sometimes it can be kind of tricky of where do you want those beads to go. But just like with all crafts, not everything has to be absolutely perfect. You're making this your own, so you're putting your own style on this. So I have a knot there. I'm gonna go uh, put my bead in there. And now that I have a knot at the top, I'm gonna go and tie and put a knot at the bottom to make sure that the bead doesn't fall off. So you're gonna be doing, practicing your knotting skills here. 
I'm gonna pull that tight. So now my bead will not fall off. All right, so now I'm gonna kind of measure out the string and I'm going to use it on the side. I'm going to do the same thing again. Put it through. And I'm going to tie this again. And this first one that I did, I'm going to tie just another knot in it. Works best if you have two knots. So that way it doesn't come untied any. There we go. All right, we'll flip it back over. All right, so I'm gonna go and use this end again. I'm gonna tie a little knot up here. Hopefully about the same place that I had my other one. But again, if it's not, that's okay. There we go. Almost right there, that'll work. So we're gonna go and put our bead through here. Need to just squish our tape down just a little bit. There we go. So I've got my bead there. And you can use any kind of beads or anything that you want. My favorite color is red, so I'm using red beads. And then we've got our knot at the top, so I'm gonna do the knot at the bottom. We don't want these beads to fall off, especially if we're sleeping. We don't want a bead to fall off and hit us in the head when we're trying to sleep. We're gonna tighten that, so there we go. So the beads are on there, not going anywhere. All right, and then I have, for this middle hole, I have some of my feathers here. I think I'm gonna tie another string and tie a feather on it. So we're going to go and just kind of measure out how long. And I'm just gonna cut. If you don't have sharp enough scissors, you can go and kind of just saw back and forth on your string so that it will kind of cut it better. And so I'm gonna stick it through the back of there. Flip it over. We're gonna tie this part. Up and around. There we go. Flip that. Okay, so now I think I might add one more bead to this. I'm gonna go and use another red one here. Then at the end, we'll go back and we'll cut off some of our extra string especially the pieces that we went and taped to get rid of those. All right, squeeze it tight there. So it's nice and tight so it can fit through the bead. Need to make it just a little tighter. And I don't know about you guys, but sometimes when I'm going and doing crafts, I have a, I get in, in the zone and have kind of a craft face going on. So sometimes I'll end up having, sticking my tongue out just a little bit to really focus on things. All right, that bead being just a little stubborn, that's okay. We'll get it. 
Almost there. There we go. Okay. I want it about, I might have this one up a little higher, so I'm gonna kind of measure it out where I want it. All right. And this string kind of is starting to fray a little at the bottom, so I might cut this one off just at the bottom and start that one again. There we go. Put that piece over there. Okay, so now we're gonna do one more top knot. I'm going to make sure we don't tie our strings together there because that would not help any of it. All right. Sometimes I kind of loop it around my thumb so I can kind of gauge where it's going to be. I'll pull it tight. So when you put the tape on the end, it's almost kind of like when you are sewing with a needle so that it's a little bit pointier so that it will help get through things better. Don't want to make it too thick, otherwise it won't fit through things. Okay, and one more bottom knot. Okay, so like I said, I was gonna go and put a feather on this one. So I have my feather here. We got bright colored yellow ones. So to tie these feathers, it's a little bit trickier. So I'm gonna go and just kind of loop it around. Just kind of pull it on through there. There we go. All right, then you can, just gonna turn it just a little bit and kind of fan the little parts out on it so it's nice and pretty looking. And so now I'm going to take my scissors and I'm just going to cut off some of the extra string here. So I'll cut this one. Want to make sure you don't cut it too close and so that you cut your knots off. Oh, there we go. On that side. I'm going to cut it on this side. And then I'm going to cut the center one here, making sure I don't go and accidentally cut my feather. There we go. All right. So now I'm almost done. I'm just going to go and decorate it just a little bit more. So I've got my markers here. Since this is a dream catcher, I'm going to go and just put some stars around it for the night sky. Just going to make some stars here. Now the cardboard is a little bit hard sometimes to see what you're drawing. That's okay. You can use markers, colored pencils, even paint if you want. I'll put another star down here. All right, it's starting to dry. You can see the stars a little more. I 
Okay, and then we'll add one more star over here. Again, you can put whatever kind of designs you want on your dream catcher. And might go and just add kind of a crescent shape of a moon. So kind of just like a sliver of a moon. We'll fill that in there. All right. And so now, kind of move some of our stuff, our supplies out of the way. You will go and have your very own dream catcher that with the hook up on the top, you can go and hang above your bed or wherever you'd like. And we're gonna snip off this little extra piece right here. We don't want that one in the way. There we go. Like that. And there you have your very own dream catcher. I'm trying to make sure. Thank you for joining us for another Rogers Historical Museum's Kid Craft Quarter. And a very special thanks to Nicole and the rest of the staff here at the Museum of Native American History for joining us and allowing us to visit your museum today. Before we go, Nicole, can you tell the people how they can go and connect with you guys? Absolutely. So Mona, or the Museum of Native American History, uh, can be found on our website, monah.us. Or you can find us on Facebook and Instagram and follow us there. And we've got great events, great virtual content uh, just to get you guys uh, going. Awesome. Thank you, Nicole. And make sure to check them out. And we'll see everybody at next month's Kids Craft Corner. Bye. Bye.